Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is real estate broker associate, Adora Beal of Hall & Chambers Real Estate out of California. Now, Adora is a hyper-local real estate professional focusing her energies on residential real estate with an emphasis on architecturally significant homes in premier areas of Glendale, California and surrounding areas. She's a licensed broker and has been in business for 17 years. She was recognized in 2013 and 14 as one of Southern California's top 50 agents and she is the president-elect for Glendale Association of Realtors. So Adora, welcome to the show. Hi Keith, thanks very much for having me. Absolutely. We're glad to have you here today. And I guess if we could start, if you could tell our listeners, you know, what, what led you into real estate? Was it something you knew you always wanted to do or did you kind of maybe stumble into it? That's an interesting question. I never thought of it until my husband suggested it. I had been a, uh, an interior designer and I was getting a little bit weary of that business. And he said, you know, why don't you try real estate? I think you'd be really good. And I took the classes and started selling real estate, and it was just a natural evolution for me. I never had a learning curve. It just was always comfortable for me. Yeah, I think that, uh, that kind of, uh, it's great that you, you know, you kind of choose a path that really wasn't, you know, that you didn't expect, but then when you fall into it, I think it just becomes natural, like you said. So you're kind of almost like it was your calling to, to be in it because it was so easy for you. I agree. Mm-hmm. So uh, what personal attributes or traits or qualities do you think have most contributed to the success you've had, and, and how do you think you've developed those? You know, um, I'm not afraid to tell clients the truth. I think many times uh, agents in interviews with their potential clients uh, will tell them what they want to hear, and I'm not that person. And I do believe that uh, prospective clients and clients who become you know, start working with me, will agree with that. Um, they want to know the truth. And people who are sufficiently motivated to list or sell a home want the truth. They don't want to mess around with me telling them uh, an inflated price and having it sit on the market for a long time. They want to get the job done, and I get the job done. I'm also not afraid to ask pertinent questions. Um, in the past, you know, I've done some training, uh, mentoring of new agents, and I find that they're afraid to ask the questions that um, are so relevant to the, their business. Um, I'm not afraid to do that. Yeah, I think that's uh, some key points you made there. Um, the one about asking questions, I think a lot of people just assume that, you know, they want to just, uh, you know, kind of just assume that they know what's going on, but to actually take that time to, to ask those questions, to find out what your, uh, you know, your customers really want, and then be able to kind of you know, help them with that. You know, I think you have to really drill down to the motivation of why a potential client wants to list or sell a home. And unless you are really in touch with that point, you're not going to be successful in that transaction. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree. Uh, we actually had an interview the other day where uh, an agent uh, received a call from her doctor and said, oh, hey, uh, my, my parents, uh, want to, you know, they want to sell their home. Can you help them? So she went and she talked to them, and um, they really didn't want to sell, but they, they thought they had to for financial reasons. They thought it would make more sense to move into a condo. And when she sat down with them and, and went through everything, it actually made more sense to stay where they were, and they were actually happier. And so she could have easily went over there and said, you know, hey, your son sent me, and let's let's get your house on the market. And they, they might have went along with it, but she took the time, like you said, you know, which I think is important, to listen what do they really need? What do they really want? And she, you know, forego a commission potentially, but she helped the client at the end of the day. You made a very important point that I would like to agree with. Um, I have a heart to serve rather than to sell. And in that, I take away the, the big piece of my potential commission because that's just a benefit of a job well done, in my opinion. You know, if I really am listening and caring and putting 
a potential client's interest in front of my own, I'm going to do an excellent job for them and everyone is going to be happy in the end. Yeah, I, I think the point you made there too is important to, to focus on too, that you, you said you, you choose to serve and you don't focus on, you know, the end result, which, you know, a byproduct of helping and really, really helping somebody is the commission, right? That comes along, and obviously you've had success throughout the years, but you haven't said, okay, I'm going to just go out and get as many commissions. I'm going to get as many listings as I can. You, you went out and said, I'm going to help as many people as I can, listen to them, you know, help them with their, their needs and their wants. And then obviously, like you said, a byproduct is the commissions are going to come because you're doing the right thing. Exactly. And to be honest, I have um, made choices in some interviews to not uh, accept a listing or work with a buyer because it wasn't a good fit for both of us. I think that's really important. We have to be comfortable with each other. We have to forge a bond of trust in order to do a good job. Excellent. Um, so, uh, you know, do you think you could maybe give us some uh, an example or specific examples of when these traits that you've talked about have played a role in your path towards success? Yes, I can. Uh, I deal a lot with family trust, and oftentimes there are painful situations. Maybe a family member has just passed away, or they've had to relocate them to senior living or whatever, and my sensitivity and desire to serve them has been in the forefront. It has created a sense of comfort in a difficult situation, and I think it has served me well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, kind of moving forward, too, a little bit with um, – Obviously, you've, you've had success, 17 years you've been in the industry. Uh, I'm sure maybe it hasn't been all, you know, roses and perfect with everything. So, you know, what are some of the major adversities or trials that you had to overcome to achieve your goals? Well, the market change in 2009 to 2012 just about laid me bare. And uh, it caused me to rethink how I did business and what I was going to do to continue. Um, I changed companies and I got involved in personal coaching, which gave me a, an all new skill set to be more successful. And I think that was my saving grace. Um, and it, it just took me to the next level in my real estate career. Yeah, I think that, you know, you, you pointed on something there, you know, you kind of ran into, hey, we, you know, the market is, is always fluctuating and there's going to be ups and downs and changes, but instead of kind of maybe, you know, walking away from it, you, you, you moved into a different path, into a different area, and you still, you know, continue to move forward and have success with it. Well, you know, just to piggyback onto that comment, uh, 2009 to 2012 was the time where we had lots and lots of short sales and bank owned, which is a segment of the market that I have never participated in. Um, I jumped into that full bore and started working in a company that that was all they worked with, and it allowed me to make it through that difficult few years when regular retail real estate was just virtually non-existent. Yeah, I think that's a great point you bring up that you, you kind of went with the market. You went with what, what you could do to, uh, like I said, continue to keep, you know, building forward and, and you realize that, hey, I'm going to move with this company that, that specializes in this so that you can get in and you can learn everything you had to so that you could uh, continue, obviously, to, to, to build during a, during a down market. It was a very difficult time, very difficult. I'm glad we're through it and in much better market now. So obviously you, you had some choices when, when the market shifted. You could have easily you could have said, hey, you know, maybe this isn't just for me anymore. Maybe I had enough of real estate. So what, what kept you going despite the, the obstacles? You know, why didn't you give up? Why did you, you know, find a way to move forward? I loved the business of real estate. As I said, it, it, there was no learning curve for me. It just fell naturally to me. And um, self-preservation is what caused me to move forward. I had a family to support, and I, I would not, could not let them down. So I had to recreate myself and my business and make the most of it. And I did. Yeah, I think it's... Uh 
That's great that you said there that, you know, you weren't, it wasn't just you involved. You obviously said you had a family, you had other people relying on you. So, you know, quitting wasn't an option. You had to, you know, well, let me, let me figure out a way around this obstacle, this, this, this market. There had to be a way. And, uh, we've talked to other realtors too that went through that. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's great to see that, uh, instead of giving up, that people forge forward and, and find a way to have success in the market, even when, you know, the market shifts or it changes and, and you have to take on a different, I guess, positioning or, you know, you know, tactics, I guess. I think it's very important to understand my motivation and, and anyone in this business. We have to know why we do what we do. All right, excellent. So, you know, that, that kind of speaks volumes uh, of, uh, you know, forging forward and continuing to move uh, your career and, and, and to build your business. So, you know, kind of looking forward now even a little bit further, you know, where, what do you see your vision for the way you're going to build your business, say, over the next five years? You know, I've thought about this for a number of years, but I think the time is is coming into fruition for me to think about uh, building a d dynamic team. Um, I have a passion for training new agents, and I want to incorporate them into my uh, business model. Uh, I want to expand what I do and do it better, and um, I think bringing in some agents, starting with buyer's agents, and maybe another listing agent down the road. I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm still kind of formulating that. But I think that's the next step for me. Yeah, I think, it. you know, from other agents we, we've talked to, it, it seems like it's uh, it's not one of those careers where you can easily say, hey, I'm, I'm taking an extended vacation. You know, it seems like that, that people, you know, need you and, and, and you have to be around. But I think what you said there might give you a way to kind of alleviate that a little bit where if you build a, build yourself a team it's not all going to be relied upon you not everybody needs you around but you could have other people that could could serve your clients the same way you did and especially if you train them i mean that mm -hmm. would be ideal if you kind of it's kind of like you know you look at a football team where they recruit people and then they train them and they build them up the way they want them it's kind of mm -hmm. where you could you could build that team around your work ethic and, and exactly how you want things to, to operate i agree so that's my goal so from a uh, kind of a still, you know, from a growth standpoint, what, what do you feel the best way that you market yourself as a real estate professional so that you can have continual growth? I think it's important to understand yourself and to know what you're really good at. For example, um, this little niche market that has been created in recent years for me with um, trust work, um, I have a lot of compassion for families that are going through difficult times. And it's kind of evolved. I, it seems to be a very good fit for me. Whereas um, some people might really want to work with really high dollar properties and just all about the money might be for them. But I think you have to figure out what you're good at and then find a way in the market to manifest that. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. I, I think to you know, uh, like you said, and, and I think it, it, that goes with any profession. You mm -hmm. know that you you find your little you know your overall niche of real estate, but then like you said, you find your little sub niche areas, and it could be more than one. But if you can really embrace your, a lot of times for our listeners, we call it your superpower. Everybody seems to have that internal uh, abilities that they might be better than other people's at certain things. So if you can identify that and then find a way to plug that into your professional career that you I mean it's not going to be like work it's going to be like fun like you said you really enjoy working on the trust and helping people and and that uh, that might be your little your superpower wheelhouse that you found there that's definitely one of them and as you said it doesn't feel like work I work really hard I do I work probably some every day and I don't take a lot of time off because I love it I love doing what I do and I think my clients uh, recognize that and appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think that sometimes when, when it comes to real estate, especially with agents, um, I, I think the barrier to entry, as you would probably agree, seems to be somewhat easy. I mean, I know there's there's some, you know, some basic training and then there's a, a, usually a test for, for licensing, but there tends to be um, misconceptions about agents and what they can do. So what do you think the biggest misconception or myth people have about working with, with real estate agents is? I think it's that all agents are alike. 
I think uh, once you get into working with a really excellent agent, you understand the difference because there is a huge difference. In a good market like we're in now, a seller's market, it seems that new agents uh, pop up all over the place because they want to, quote, get rich quick. Uh, and I think their um, business acumen reflects that. They don't really serve their clients. They just want to get them sold. They just want to, you know, get to the, the commission the quickest, easiest way they can, and they cut corners. And I think it gives a good ethical agent with integrity a bad rap because the perception is that all agents are alike and all agents just want that commission. So I think that's so untrue and unfair. And once you work with a really excellent agent, you understand that. Yeah, I think on the other side of, of like a person thinking, oh, I'm just going to, like you said, I think they have the, the grandeur of, oh, I'm just going to get my license and I'm going to be rich. You exactly. Know? And, and they're, mm -hmm. they're focused on the money, which as we alluded to earlier, uh, I think in any line of work is, is the wrong way to approach uh, success because at the end of the day, you know, it's I think people that focus on the money, they may achieve it and, and for a short period of time, but I think at the end of the day, um, those that serve others that really help people and, and they do the right thing by other people are the ones that are truly going to thrive and have success, as, as you've proven in your 17 years. Well, thank you. I think, um, I think there's a very high percentage of failure rate in the real estate market for that very reason. You know, very few agents make it more than two or three years if they have that mindset. Excellent. So let's say we'll kind of take a, a hy hypothetical situation here. Let's say that you get a call from a family member. Say they're they're in New York. They, mm -hmm. they thought they were in they thought they were in spring, but they got snow here in uh, in April, and they said, "Oh, we're done with it. We're sick of this. We're we're going to sell our house here." And then you know what? We're gonna we're gonna move out with you in in, in California. What to, what advice would you give them? Um, obviously, you know we know you could potentially do a referral and you could help them, but what advice would you give them to, to select an agent uh, who could best serve their needs, kind of how you take care of your people? How would you help them try to find that, that kind of person that's similar to you that could, that could really serve them and help them? I would look for uh, a seasoned agent who has uh, some type of a venue that they can go to to read client reviews. I think the best recommendation you can have is client reviews because they're telling the truth from their perception, their experience, and nobody's paying them to do that. So, you know, perhaps a Zillow or something like that where you have client comments. Um, I would look for an agent that does a lot of business in the area that they want to work in. I would see if they're, they've been in business at least 10 years. Um, and look for their areas of specialty. Maybe they might specialize in relocation or something like that. And then I would read the reviews from past clients. Yeah, I think you brought a, a great point up there about reviews. I mean, uh, especially, you know, like you said, they're, 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 you know, potential clients, they've worked with them, and, and they're going to be honest, and, and you're going to get a really, especially with the day and age of the Internet, I mean, you, you simply go and type somebody's name in, and, and usually you're going to see a whole plethora of information of, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's it's really important. I mean, even you think like my wife and I go to a, another town or city and, and we'll go on our phone and look for a place to eat. You look at the reviews. Oh, these, you know, they got five stars. This must be a good place, you know, and, and we take, you know, we take the recommendation of, of other people's reviews. So everybody, inter you know, everybody uses the inter Internet for that. By, they by the time they come to calling an agent, uh, for an interview, they already know everything about them. It's, it's quite interesting. Uh, I find it all the time. I ask people who call me and ask, uh, you know, if we can get together and talk about listing a home, I ask them every time, where did you find me? I found you on the Internet. Well, great. You know, they've gone to my Zillow page and looked at my agent reviews, and, and it feels like a good fit for them, and they call me. Or other places as well. My website, my top agent magazine. Uh, a number of 
Yeah, I, I think that's that's key to what you said there is that, you know, from a, an agent standpoint, I think it's it's key to point out if we have an agent listening that you you really need to make sure you have your your presence out there. Obviously, Absolutely. there's many many different places from obviously you mentioned all the uh, you know, referral or not the referral but the uh feedback and, and, and people making recommendations, as well as even, you know, Facebook and all the social media sites. I, I, I think, like you said, people do their homework now. They're going to at least type your name in at a minimum. And as an agent, as a person, you should probably do that and see see what your reputation looks like, you know, exactly. see what people see out there so you can, you know, make sure you're putting on, a you know, the proper picture. Because that's the truth. You know, nobody pays them to give you those referrals or recommendations. That's the truth. So... Uh, I really value those endorsements highly. Yeah, yeah, definitely a third party like that. I think it speaks more volumes than, like you said, you know, the, anything that, that you manufacture yourself, obviously. Mm -hmm. So if if somebody wants to find out more about you and, and how you can help them, especially if they're in the uh, in your area, uh, Glendale, California, and surrounding areas, what's what's the best way they can find out more about you and how you can help them? Well, they can go to livinginglendale.com, which is my website, or they could go to zillow.com and type in my name, Adora Deal, and read my client endorsements. Uh, or they can just put my name on Google and see what comes up. There's a, a wealth of information, and my contact information is there. Excellent. Well, Adora, I, I certainly, I know you're busy, obviously, and, and we certainly appreciate you for taking time to come here today and to to share your business experience uh, with our listeners and, and and everything that you've kind of learned throughout your your 17 year career and uh, anybody listening too, if you want to learn more about Adora, we're going to have uh, links below uh, this interview so we'll have all her contact information uh, I know she mentioned some of it but we'll get it and we'll have it there we'll have her website and, and any of her contact information so that you can uh, you can reach out and, and you can uh, see if uh, she'd be a good fit to work with you or like she said just go to Google and type her name and I think that speaks volumes too that she's she knows that what you're going to find is, is is quality otherwise I think people wouldn't tell you know they would, hey don't don't google me because you're not going <laughs> to like what you see I'm very but, proud uh, of my accomplishments Keith thank you for the opportunity to share with you today I really appreciate it absolutely thank you again and everybody uh, until our next show have a great day and we'll talk to you all soon Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.